This tutorial will look at Live's browser. Browser section can be opened up by clicking on any of these icons down the left hand side of the screen. It can be shut again either with the triangular icon at the top or by pressing Ctrl Alt B or Command Alt B on the Mac. Browser can be adjusted to the size that you want by pulling on the bar on its right edge. Each of the icons in the browser section opens up a different part of the browser. The second icon down reveals Live's device browser, and this is where you can select audio effects, MIDI effects, and instruments. Live has a great variety of audio effects available, and many have been designed with DJs in mind. You should try to have a good play with these when you get some time and see which ones you like. To load an audio effect, Either drag it onto the audio track that you want it on, or select an audio track. Click on the tab to make sure you can see the track view selector, and drag the effect to where it says drop audio effects here. I'll start this audio clip playing so that you can hear what it sounds like, firstly without the beat repeat effect playing, and now with the effect on. Most of the effects come with a number of presets built in, and it's easy to try each of these by using this button here, which allows you to hot swap presets. To do this, start the clip playing and then press the hot swap button. You can now double click on a preset to try each one in turn. We look at audio effects in further detail in the tutorial on using effects. In this part of the browser, you can also select MIDI effects, which work in a similar way to audio effects and Live's built-in instruments. We'll talk about using these in the section on MIDI. The next icon down opens up the plugin device browser. This is where you can find instruments and effects that have been made by companies other than Ableton. If you don't currently have any other plugins to use, don't worry because you will have plenty by using the ones currently available in Live. However, if you do, you'll need to tell Live where to find them on your hard drive. Press the activate button and this will take you to the file folder page in preferences. Click where it says off in the plugin sources section to activate the plugin folder and then browse to where you want to keep the folder. If you currently have plugins that are being used by a different sequencer program, such as Cubase on my computer, then you should browse to the folder that that program already uses. So on my computer, that will be the VST plugins folder within the Steinberg folder in Program Files. If you're a Windows user, you'll now be able to use VST plugins. If you're a Mac user, you can use VST plugins and audio units, which are designed specifically for Macs. The next three icons down are marked 1, 2 and 3, and these are used as general purpose file browsers, just like Windows Explorer or Finder on the Mac. This is where you can choose audio and MIDI files and drag and drop them into your project. You can navigate through these browsers as you would normally, and double click on the up arrow at the top to go back up a folder level. If you want to hear a sample before you drag it in, Turn on the preview function denoted by this set of headphones here and click on the sample that you want. If you don't want to leave preview on all the time, then you can press shift return instead and this will let you hear the sample when you want to. If you've had enough and need to stop a sample from previewing, press escape. A useful function that's been added to Live 8 is if you want to preview the middle of an audio sample, you can do it by clicking on the waveform that appears at the bottom of the browser window. This function is particularly aimed at DJs who generally work with very long audio samples. A point to remember for when you come to perform with Live is that you should be careful of leaving preview turned on, because if you don't watch out it's very easy to preview files accidentally out loud over the music. You might be wondering why there are three file browsers that all do the same thing. 
This is simply so that you can set each one to different locations that you regularly use. There is also a list of common locations at the top which can be quickly accessed by clicking on this small black triangle. You can add extra locations to this bookmark list simply by selecting Bookmark Current Folder. A useful location within these bookmarks is Live's library. This is where Live saves sounds and files that are available to all projects. This includes clips and grooves that Ableton has provided to give you an idea of what you can do with the program and other useful items such as Live's built-in lessons and the Live set templates. If you need to find files then there is a search facility and this is accessed by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. The final icon opens up Live's hot swap browser. This mode is engaged when you want to audition samples or presets to use with a virtual instrument. This is the end of the tutorial looking at Live's browser.